Hello, my name is Ming Xiao. I'm a professor of civil engineering at Penn State. Today, I'm going to uh, present the uh, in situ monitoring of uh, permafrost geophysical and geomechanical characteristics using a distributed acoustic uh, sensing or DAS. First of all, I want to thank the uh, collaborators. And on this photo and uh, on the left, you can see Dr. Eileen Martin, uh, assistant professor from Virginia Tech and uh, three uh, graduate students uh, from Penn State, Xia Hangji, uh, Ming Liu, and uh, Nolan Roth, and also Dr. Uh, Ann Jensen, uh, anthropologist in Ogiavik, Alaska. And uh, also uh, we have collaborators, uh, Dr. Chi Yuan Zhu uh, from Penn State, and Dr. Dmitry Nikoski from UAF. I'd like to thank the uh, support from uh, DOE, NOAA, and USC Science for their support in our cable installation in Ugyavik, which I'll talk more in detail. And um, in the past 40 years, there has been a significant temperature increase among in the uh, permafrost, and in particular in the northern Alaska, as you can see uh, in the, uh, showing uh, uh, on this slide. Here are some uh, uh, examples of the photo that I took uh, in Ugyavik, Alaska, and you can see large office buildings or smaller uh, residential houses, they are supported by uh, piles, which penetrate uh, through the active layer into the permafrost. The issue is with the climate change and the warmer, and uh, the uh, permafrost is warming and thawing, and uh, causing a significant decrease in the uh, strength of the uh, soil, and also settlements of the soil, and uh, causing significant uh, foundation failures. So the uh, uh, research project uh, is to uh, understand and uh, forecast uh, long-term variations of in situ geophysical and geomechanical characteristics of degrading permafrost uh, in the Arctic. Here I emphasize uh, two keywords. One is long-term and um, uh, well in the uh, planning or construction of the infrastructure we really want to know in the next uh, you know a decades or maybe three decades how the foundations are going to perform and uh, and uh, with the soil condition. And uh, instead of uh, taking uh, discrete uh, soil samples and uh, do lab testing, and uh, uh, we really want to know how the geophysical geomechanical properties vary uh, uh, in situ for different uh, soil terrain and uh, soil condition and uh, climate condition. So the technique we use is the uh, um, district acoustic sensing or DAS. And um, basically, DAS is a novel uh, technology uh, that uh, repurposes a standard fiber optic cable at both an array of seismic sensors and a means of uh, transmitting data from those sensors to a centralized uh, 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 interrogator unit. A DAS requires a dense array of uh, seismological information which can be uh, analyzed to infer shear wave velocity and a compression wave velocity. Uh, by measuring the uh, localized uh, scattering uh, along the uh, along the fiber uh, cable, and um, well, in contrast to the uh, conventional seismic monitoring, and uh, that uh, we use the uh, specially uh, discrete uh, geophones, and that um, systems uh, utilize a single uh, optoelectric uh, interrogator unit that can uh, sample tens of kilometers of uh, fiber optic cables at a sub-meter uh, sensor spacing. So here shows the, uh, um, uh, the function of the, uh, of the cable. And you can see the uh, DAS interrogator and uh, uh, sends a laser pulse uh, into the uh, fiber uh, optic cable. And, um, and then a small amount of incident lights is scattered uh, backwards and, uh, uh, to uh, the uh, sensing unit, the interrogator. And then the system and builds up a profile of a spec scattered light along fiber um, and by comparing one pulse to the next. And this will, uh, gen uh, will yield a dynamic uh, profile of uh, changes in the strain along the uh, on fiber. Once we know the uh, uh, dynamic uh, uh, strain rate and uh, along the uh, cable at different locations and uh, uh, under different uh, uh, air temperature and ground temperature. And then we can convert that into the uh, shear wave uh, and a compression wave velocities. And then we can correlate that into the uh, geomechanical, geophysical properties of the permafrost. 
Well, here shows the our uh, uh, map of the our route that uh, we installed the uh, the cable, and uh, we started at the uh, DOE facility, and uh, then the cable went uh, along a uh, service road and uh, under the uh, NOAA uh, building, and then into uh, the tundra and uh, ends close to the uh, coast of the uh, Elson um, Lagoon. Here I want to share um, uh, a, a drone um, footage. Uh, you can see this is uh, at the, uh, the NOAA uh, building and uh, the DOE building and the, the service road. And then from here, the uh, cable uh, extends uh, toward the uh, Elson Lagoon. Well, the terrain, as you can see, closer to the, uh, the NOAA facility and uh, the uh, lands uh, is drier and closer to the uh, coast and, uh, and uh, it becomes uh, much wetter. So here's another um, uh, drone footage that was taken uh, closer to the Elsa Lagoon, and uh, this is looking uh, toward the uh, the NOAA facility and NOAA and DOE facilities. This is uh, somewhat along the uh, route uh, of the fiber optic cable. As you can see that, uh, and uh, and this is our our team and here, and uh, this is about. Uh, 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 a kilometer away from the Aranoa um, building. Well, we have a truckload of uh, the uh, fiber optic cables and uh, they are heavy and uh, uh, how do we uh, uh, install them? And uh, first we uh, carry the uh, cables and carefully along the uh, tundra and here we have a, a team of those and I want to share a uh, video footage. Oh, always oh. good side of that. <laughs> the paparazzi's here. <laughs> So, um, and how, how do we do it? And uh, well, uh, uh, one shovel at a time. And uh, well, and uh, the active layer uh, is not a thick, and it's about um, uh, from our uh, four inch uh, to uh, about twelve inch, or in other words, from uh, a ten centimeter to uh, maybe about a thirty centimeter. And um, and we use a shovel and uh, to. Uh, uh, sh shovel into the active layer and uh, reach the permafrost table and then we uh, tilt the shovel and open a crevice and insert uh, uh, the cable and then uh, once we push the cable in and we uh, uh, move uh, uh, the uh, remove the uh, shovel and uh, let the uh, crack close then we uh, tap the ground and uh, so that the uh, uh, the crack will completely close and here um, in this photo, you can see this is right after the uh, cable installation and you can still see a uh, visible uh, a crack. And after a few days, and we won't be able to identify where the cables are. All right, so this is our last point for the uh, cable installation. Last shovel, this end of the uh, DTS, oh, and, and it does. Maybe DTS cable left, but uh, this is the end of uh, the DAS cable. Zero meter. One more. Cool. Last one. <laughs> 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 All right, I didn't get the last shovel. Thanks to Anne. We did not encounter a polar bear. Yeah. So we did not get used to the shotgun. Yeah. And we got to the right place. <laughs> yeah, so what a know, nice, next, beautiful day. The more next year or something, it's not, you know. Yeah. 
Okay, the rest of the crew finishing up the uh, installation. I already celebrated. Yeah, so there. we were saying the professors <laughs> celebrate while the grad <laughs> students we work. Oh, what, what a typical. No, huh? like, we took a photo <laughs> of us working hard and you guys celebrating over there. Okay, yeah, yeah. We pre-celebrated already. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this is a uh, you know a team of very hardworking uh, members, and uh, and this is our uh, uh, Matt, and, um, and uh, from USC Science, and uh, they've been so supportive of us. Well, um, here is our brief video, uh, you know, uh, uh, from Nolan Roth, and he explained uh, how the uh, how the DAS works, and uh, we uh, housed the, the uh, DAS interrogator uh, in the uh, DOE um, uh, facility. Hi, I'm Nolan. Um, I'm a graduate student at Penn State here, not at Penn State, in Utkaivik, Alaska. Um, so what we're doing here and what I've been working on really is setting up the hardware for the Terra 15 uh, DAS interrogator. DAS is Distributed Acoustic Sensing. So Distributed Acoustic Sensing uses a fiber optic cable that we installed um, in the tundra here and it can sense vibrations in the ground and acoustic waves traveling through the air and the ground to our fiber um, and we can actually see that output right here so what we're seeing here yellow spots are spots with more vibration blue spots are spots with less vibration we're all along this here this is our cable and we can see that there's a a moving line of vibration between zero and 300 meters from here and that's moving pretty fast i bet that's a truck driving down the road. It's, it, you can tell these things by looking at the cables, seeing the vibrations and how um, they move along this plot. Well, this is only uh, the first task, uh, task one, to deploy and uh, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, DAS cable. And uh, here shows the uh, research strategy of the uh, five uh, tasks and their integration. And uh, once we have the table, uh, have the cables in the ground, and we're going to collect a significant amount of data in the next uh, two years, and we'll collect over 50 terabytes of um, uh, of data. And to transmit and analyze, you know, uh, those data is a significant challenge. Um, and then uh, next summer, we also uh, uh, plan to conduct the uh, multi-channel analysis of surface waves and uh, seismic uh, uh, refraction uh, uh, in the tundra, and so that we can uh, measure the uh, shear wave and the velocity wave velocities using the uh, traditional approach. And then we can use uh, th uh, those data uh, uh, to validate or, or check uh, the uh, DAS data uh, and uh, uh, where we can uh, get the, uh, also the shear wave and the uh, compressional wave velocities. And we also plan to take uh, our uh, samples and, uh, and bring to the lab and uh, to characterize and, uh, the uh, thermal geophysical and uh, uh, geomechanical properties. So um, from uh, task uh, two and three, and uh, with the uh, uh, wave velocities and the geophysical mechanical properties of the permafrost and the uh, measured temperature, and then we can um, uh, develop the correlation between the uh, geophysical mechanical properties of permafrost with the shear wave and, uh, and compression wave velocities. And then use those correlations and along with the uh, permafrost model uh, that had been developed by uh, Dr. Uh, Nikoski from UAF. And then we hope we will you know, uh, further develop into a model to predict or forecast the future uh, changes of the geophysical, geomechanical properties and uh, given the uh, uh, certain climate uh, conditions. But here, just want to show you uh, an example and uh, on uh, uh, October 11th and uh, 9 o'clock or 9.10 UTC time and uh, there uh, was a uh, 6.9 earthquake, uh, magnitude earthquake and uh, this happens uh, uh, somewhere uh, uh, southwest of uh, Alaska and then uh, six minutes later and um, the uh, our DAS in, uh, interrogator uh, and um, detected this uh, strong uh, ground motion. Well, I don't have a further result to share with you yet since we just installed the cable uh, last month. But uh, hopefully in the uh, near future, I will be able to uh, share some of the outcomes and uh, with the community. And uh, this uh, research is funded by the uh, National Science Foundation's uh, Signals in the Soil program. Uh, and uh, we appreciate the NSF support. Thank you.